Hi everybody, it's Mark here from High Rise Digital and here is another WordPress developer type video for you. And if you're interested in seeing more of these, please do, do consider hitting the subscribe button which you'll find just below. Now in this video, I want to talk to you about something that I've recently learnt from one of our WP Cafe episodes. Now if you've not uh, watched the WP Cafe series, it's a series of videos where we chat with WordPress professionals about development solutions and things for small and uh, medium-sized businesses and freelancers. And this particular episode was on security with Tim Nash and Chris Wegman. And something that we, we learned in that episode was that keeping your website up to date, your WordPress website up to date, was one of the most important things you can do from a security standpoint. So the, 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 the lesson that I learned was to make sure that everything auto-updates. Don't rely on a manual update because you're only ever going to do that well, even if it's once a day, you're going to be doing it perhaps too late. So what I've worked towards now is moving our sites to a auto update process and then making sure that those are backed up, etc. So if you want to watch that video, I'll link it up in the in, in the corner here so you can click on that as well. So the premise here is that we want to move so that WordPress plugins, core themes, all auto update uh, for, for major and minor updates. So everything just automatically updates. We don't need to touch anything. But obviously, sometimes, and this is very, very rarely, and this is probably why auto-update is the best option here, is that you, you know, an update can break something. So we need to know straight away if that happens. So we need to set up some sort of uh, monitoring on the site that basically warns us of that problem. Now, there will be rare occasions where auto-update probably isn't the right thing. And in the video, um, Chris and Tim talk about where that, that might be. Possibly things like shops, uh, etc. But they go into more detail about that. But for the 99.9% .9 of the sites that we build, it's better to do it this way. The, 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 sort of, um, the downside of having some downtime from an auto-update, the benefit of that far outweighs you know, having downtime from someone hacking into your site because you haven't updated it. So let's get into having a look at the setup, which is really simple, um, and I'll just talk you through this. So here we are in my editor, and I've got a project set up here which we're currently working on. But the key, the key thing here is the Git ignore file. So I'm going to show you that in this project. Now, Git ignore for those that don't know is that we have our project set up in a Git repository. Um, it's a version controlled code base, which means that every change you make is tracked, and you can commit changes, you can roll back, etc. Git's probably another video, but um, it's, it's certainly worth looking into if you haven't looked at it before. Now, because we're letting WordPress auto-update themes, plugins, and core, we don't want to have those under version control, because if we do, then we'll get out of sync with the live site, or um, it'll just get a bit problematic where, where our, our code isn't updated and the live site is, and then we don't want to be updating that. We want to let WordPress update itself. So what we need to do is we need to use the git ignore file, which basically is a way of saying, here's my folder of stuff that I'm working on, but I don't want you to track the things that I had in git ignore. Ignore these things. So here's how I've started doing my git ignore. So I've basically said the first line, I've said just ignore everything in, in this particular folder. So nothing is going to be version controlled to start with. And then here, I'm basically saying, well, actually, you, you need to uh, be aware of this git ignore file. So don't ignore that one, um, because I need this to tell you what to ignore and, and what not to ignore. Then um, I'm saying, don't ignore the WP content folder. So I want to make sure that that is in version control, which is where all your plugins, themes, and etc. and things are. Um, so don't ignore that, but, but then I'm telling it to actually ignore everything within that folder. So the folder itself isn't ignored, but any folder inside it is ignored, okay? Um, and then I'm doing the same thing on line seven. So I'm basically saying, then ignore the themes folder, but then don't ignore anything inside this themes folder, which is this bit with line number eight with the star on it. Because I want to tell my uh, Git repository which themes I want to be under version control. Now, those are going to be your custom themes, the themes that you haven't downloaded from somewhere and that you're doing custom code on. So if you're using a, a commercial theme, maybe a Studio Press theme or, or something that you've bought off one of, the, uh, one of the software stores, you're going to want to create a child theme of that. That child theme can be version controlled. The parent you don't want to be because that's going to auto-update. So in here, I'm saying, um, 
uh, don't ignore things uh, in there. And and then I'm saying, um, basically, I'm saying uh, 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 let let these particular things be ignored. So so sorry, go back to here. line number nine. Don't ignore this theme. PMD theme is my custom theme that I'm doing custom development on. So don't ignore that. I want that under version control. That's what the exclamation mark at the front says. Uh, don't ignore that within that folder. And then I'm saying within that theme, I've got a couple of things that I do want you to ignore. That's the gulp config file, which is uh, relevant to the local user, to, to me personally on my machine. So I don't want you to, I, I do want you to ignore that because the other person that pulls the repository will have their own. And similarly, I don't want to include all the node modules, um, which is hundreds and hundreds of files and folders, as you well know. So please uh, ignore that. Don't stick all those in version control. And then we do a similar approach with the plugins. So we say, don't ignore the new plugins folder, please. Do ignore everything inside it except uh, this particular plugin, Network Utilities, which is a custom piece of code. So I want that to be under version control. So I'm adding the exclamation mark there to say, uh, don't ignore it. And then similarly with the plugins. So again, ignore plugins, uh, allow stuff inside the plugins. Uh, sorry, don't <laughs> start again. Don't ignore the plugins folder. Do ignore everything inside that folder and then don't ignore these two custom plugins which I want under version control. Um, so we always do a utility plugin with all our projects, which is where we have custom project or site code that is not theme specific, so that you can um, put stuff in there that's not theme specific. So if you change your theme, you still get that custom code, but it's not related to your theme, so you, you're, it's theme independent, which is what you want. And then we've got a, a little plugin here that we're working on which we also want to have under version control because it's our custom code. So I know that's a little complicated, but the concept here is that we're ignoring everything that is not custom code. And if it is custom code, we're adding it into the repository. Now, if I just collapse these files here on the left-hand side, hopefully you can see that a lot of these are gray, um, which means that they're ignored. So it's, I can tell whether my, my um, code has worked here, if you like. Um, because they're grey and all these files are ignored, which is great because these are all uh, custom, uh, sorry, these are all uh, WordPress core files. The git ignore project uh, folder is white, which means it, is, it isn't ignored, as is the WP, config file, uh, com WP content folder, which means that's also in version control. But when I expand that, I can see that the languages folder is ignored, upgrade, uploads are all ignored, which is perfect. If I go into new plugins, I can see the folder itself is allowed or is not ignored, but anything inside it is except what I've explicitly told it not to be, which is network utilities in this case. Same in plugins, all those plugins are ignored except my two custom ones, which are in white, and similar with themes, the default theme is uh, ignored and then my custom one isn't ignored. So that sets your project up, so only your custom code is version control, which is perfect. And that means that we can now let WordPress auto-update everything. So how do we do that? Well, I just generated a really quick plugin. It's very, very straightforward here. Um, it's using some of the WordPress core filters to tell WordPress to auto-update. So we're basically saying here, auto-update plugins is true. Auto-update themes is true. Allow minor core updates is true as well. And allow major core updates is true. So enable all of those things. And last but not least, this filter just forces auto updates, even if uh, WordPress detects for some reason a version controlled uh, code environment. So if it finds like a .git file or something like that in the, in the folder, it usually stops auto updating because it kind of thinks you're handling that. But even, this, this last filter here, I'm just basically saying, even if you find one of those, ignore it, carry on auto updating, all is good. Um, and that just, that, I just stick that in the new plugins folder so it's running on all the, the staging site and the live site and, and even the, the local site as well so that that is um, always updated. And then what we also then need is two other things. So the first one, if I just flip to my browser here, this is I use a spin up WP to manage my uh, DigitalOcean server, really recommend it. And it has a Git integration. So I'm basically saying um, this the Git uh, file for this, uh, the Git folder, the Git repository for this particular project is here. We're going to use the master branch because it's a live site. You could have scripts that you run in, in this box here. So if you're using something like Composer, which I don't understand yet, that's something I want to learn, um, you, you probably want to run Composer here 
when you commit something um, and then at the bottom here this is the brilliant little uh, feature is the push to deploy so you can integrate this with something like github by uh, every time you push to a branch it will automatically deploy your code and that's really handy as well uh, so that you can get your code onto the site now the last thing that i would recommend that you do is to set up some sort of uh, uptime monitoring on your site so that you know when the site has, has gone down so if an update is run and something's caused a problem you can monitor that straight away um, so we use a couple of methods we use uptime robot uh, which is free and that will ping your site I think it's every, I think you can set it but I think it's every five minutes I've got that set to um, and it will just send you an email if the site's down so that you can then obviously have a look at that and we also use manage WP um, to do something like backups and things uh, and that will also tell you that the site has, has whether the site has gone down and again you can set the interval for that now last thing probably the most important is that this method relies on the fact that if the site goes down from an update you need to be able to get that site back online in a matter of minutes so most good web hosts um, will provide you with a backup and a restore service literally a one-click service restore the backup from yesterday or restore the backup from a few hours ago um, and they work really well so if your site's gone down that's the thing you do you hit the backup restore button and then you're back online and then you can worry about what went wrong with the auto update um, similar in spin up here we have a backup section which backs up to Amazon AWS uh, S3 storage and uh, here I can just restore one of these backups from a previous day should any problem happen but it's absolutely imperative that you have a backup when you're doing auto updates it's imperative you have a backup anyway but when you're doing it this way it's much more important because you can't test whether something's going to work just to give you a bit of context um, I've been running this now for a, I think it's about a month I'm not sure but I think it's about a month I've had zero problems with anything breaking with any update and just to give you context I've been running auto updates on my personal blog which I don't have under version control or anything because it's just core stuff I've been doing that for over a year now and I've had zero problems it's never <laughs> touch wood it's never broken it's never fold over because of an update so I think it's a pretty robust process that WordPress letting WordPress auto update so top tip then I learned from that security um, episode of WP cafe you know let your site auto update it's far better for security than it is to you to manually do it and if all you're doing when you're manually doing it is pushing a button you may as well let the server do it and let, let, let WordPress handle that uh, that update process itself make sure you have uptime monitoring make sure you have a backup that you can roll back to ignore everything in your git repository except the custom stuff you're doing and I'm sure that'll improve your development workflow I'd love to hear how you set up your projects let me know in the comments below um, I'm sure it's very different to this do you think this will work do you not let me know in the comments below hit the like button if you think this is a good video and please do subscribe if you want to watch more of these in the future anyway for now until next time thanks for watching and we'll see you soon